but we're actually big users of Department of Commerce in, in our export strategy and how we go to market. Um, we sell modular interlocking flooring systems for specialty applications. So what, is, what does that mean? So we'll sell products for anything from special events where we'll cover a stadium for a concert or uh, do 10 floors for the Olympics or something like that to um, interlocking floors for oil rigs and oil platforms uh, where you need access to the middle of the Amazon. So our products are pretty obscure, which makes it pretty tough to reach people in the markets that we service. So, you know, back when we first got involved with Carmela and Trade, uh, we were doing about 12 million in sales back around 2008. Uh, we did about a million dollars in export at the time. Uh, this year, we'll do about $80 million in sales uh, with close to 50% of that export, so $40 million of our business is export. And it's, you know, it, it's become very much an obsession of ours to continue to grow internationally, but that, you know, that takes a devoted sort of group of people to work on that. And that's sort of the first piece of advice I give people is exporting doesn't just happen. And the Department of Commerce is there to help you, but ultimately it's what you do with that help that really distinguishes how you do internationally. So just a couple of case, case studies and things that we've worked on with them. Um, you know, what I, what I usually like to talk about is sort of this gold key service that they have. It's this partner matching service where you've identified a market in a particular country and you say, look, I think that my product is perfect for this country. The problem is you don't know where to start or who could potentially represent you in the country. And you know, some people have strategies of going directly to a country and that's a valuable strategy. And others, you're looking for an agent or a partner. Uh, what you do is you sit down with one of their consultants. We work with a guy named Brian Hollowell out of New York. Uh, and you tell them a little bit about what you do and the type of uh, distributors or dealers or agents or reps you're looking for and what the profile is for them. You know, they need to be big, they need to be small, they need to have a service capability. Um, and then what they'll try and do is they'll, they'll forward that information to the local office. So in one specific case in Japan, which is a pretty tough market for an American company to, to to, to break into, particularly because there's a language barrier and there's a cultural barrier, and they do help you along the way. Uh, but what they'll do is they'll actually go out to a database of people that they have in their system in Japan. And they'll have someone who's fluent in Japanese sending your brochures or your information to maybe 50 contacts that they've identified as being potential contacts. And then when they get interest back from them, they'll feed that interest back to you. And eventually that evolves into a situation where, where they'll set up a visit and you'll actually go over to Japan, they'll brief you on customs, they'll sit down with you uh, at each of the meetings and escort you kind of throughout Japan, uh, wherever your meetings are, um, in, in an effort to get you to sort of have this face-to-face -face contact. And that for us resulted in a Japanese agent that you know, consistently does close to $300,000 a year. I mean, this year was, was quite a bit larger uh, for us, but I don't think we could have done that without that face-to-face -face work and certainly the local legwork.